Well, it's nice to know that uh, I've just been given back 19 points because somebody had violated the situation. You lost to someone who violated the light chest terms and con terms of something TOS, whatever. Um, refunded 19 rapid rating points. Hmm, interesting. wonder if I'm going to get some more of them because I, I played loads and loads and loads of games into last week and there were some, you know, some games that I lost, but I, I weren't interested. I was just like just playing the games, blah, blah, blah. Um, I did think they were very strong, but hey, what can you do? Um, so, yeah, um, that's really quite nice. Thanks, Lachess. That's okay. Or Leachess. 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 Which, however you say it. Um, so, I'm just going to crack in and just celebrate by playing a rapid game now. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just rest, you know. Can play too much chess, but I think if it's if I'm learning, if I'm doing something for I'm doing it for a reason, not just doing it just to play the game, I'm actually doing it to try and develop. So I'm actually going to kick in a game, go for the minimum of eight minutes. Okay, so we could go for longer, but in terms of interest and keeping the brain ticking over, um, just nice and steady, a bit more speed in there, then I'll go for the longer games as I'm going developing um, this quick response situation but other than that yeah quite happy with um, what we're doing so far and the losing to win and oh we're on right let's go let's focus concentrate <clears throat> Nice and steady. Let's push through the center here. Oh, it's captured. Bit eager. Let's develop the bishop attacking the weak pawn. And develop the knight protecting. And last but not least, shall we bring our bishop out? I'm actually going to wait. Let's let's wait. Takes and then it develops his bishop. Attacking the pawn here, then he has a two on one. So we have to be careful of that. So for now, we don't need to do anything. Let's castle. And then we can bring this rook to support the pawn. Okay, so let's just bring the bishop back. That's all pretty straightforward at the minute. So you get to understand the makeup of the player from their initial moves. So this is like a sneaky little, <laughs> I was going to swear, then. this is a sneaky guy, this is like a snake, you know, sort of slivering in, just sort of trying to get the sly little moves going on, so we have to be mindful of that, so with them being a little bit of a snake, we have to be steady, so now we can go here, then the bishop takes, then the rook comes here, it's supporting the pawn. I think we're fairly comfortable with that. I suppose his knight can take, and then the bishop takes with the queen. Mm hmm. I'm actually going to bring the rook first. There's no rush. And it's the smallest of moves. So his knight's now getting activated. So is this one of those cases where we should have taken the knight off the ball because now the opponent is coming strong with that piece that could have been taken. I think it probably could be, but has he made his position worse? He's not really made it stronger. We could go here, but he's going to drop the pawn. This guy is a little bit of a snake, so I'm going to just be steady as I go. I'm going to bring my bishop here. He's trying to sliver his way into this situation. So... I think we're going to have to start taking pieces off the board. We should have probably taken them. We need to chop off the head of the snake, stop it from slivering. How do we do this? We need to start simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Steady on. Okay, so he's attacking 
Hi, peace for the lesser peace. Knight can come here, and then we've got a two and one on this pawn. So I'm going to do that now. We need to start. Ring in this snake. Let's go with that. Let's take. And we have to be mindful of this. I don't want to fall into this bishop being able to take something, you know, checking, whatever. Let's go with that. Let's go here. We need to stop this snake from slivering. This hasn't got any protection on at the moment. So if he's looking to move the bishop to try and, you know, get the queen, let's not forget we can take another piece of the snake off. Probably think the rook's coming here to defend. No, he's moving it out of the way so he knows this. It's attacking our bishop, a little snake, as we've seen before. So it's, it's constantly just trying to sliver away. We could take his knight. Doubles his pawns if he doesn't want to exchange the queen. I'm just taking the knight. We said we're going to start chopping up this snake. He's too, um, yeah, so he's doubled the pawns. He's not interested in it, getting that. So I need to chop pieces off of the snake. So I'm going to attack this knight. And I'm actually going to take the knight off the board. Like I said, I'm not really messing about. Less pieces he's got, less pieces he can sliver around with. Now, I'm going to attack here, but the rook is going to come and protect. And was interested in hitting this pawn. If he does take, queen takes with a check, but I don't think he's going to take. He's going to push past because he's a slivering snake. But then we can push here. Yep, okay, so I'm going to have to do that. And I'm not insulting them. This is a characteristic of chess players type things that I use. There's like bull, bulldogs. Oh, it's gone for the check. So we'll go with the check here. Might have moved too quick there, but it's a check all the same. He has to deal with it. Do we keep that pressure on? Well, we've got the pressure on, haven't we, for now. But if we brought it here, then it releases it a little bit. I was looking at the knight coming here, but he does have his rook there as well. His rook doesn't have any protection on it. So I could come back here, looking to see if it's stealthy enough. I've got to be mindful. I don't want to fall into that trap of the bishop being in front of Just We're okay for now, I think. He may come down and attack the rook. Oh, he's seeing he's seen stuff. He's been a little bit snaky. Knight here. Knight here. No, can't go there. Knight here. Can take this pawn. Yeah, let's take a bit of more of the snake off. We've still got this x-ray through to the queen, which is a bit bothersome. He's going to start panicking I think and just yeah okay let's take this queen off the board and we do have the bishop but he's protecting it with that at the minute slivering snake could come here to come here to attack the king but the bishop's there so we can't do that <sighs> right make it look like we're attacking the pawn And then swing over and attack the bishop. Bishop comes down, attacks the rook. Don't want to get too at it, but we need to get rid of pieces. King comes down to defend. Could look to double up. Then the bishop comes in front, though. Ah. Anyway, the bishop comes in front, then we push pressure here. Okay. King comes down. Doubling up on the pawn. Bishop blocks. Oh, what have I fallen into? What have I done to myself? Oh. Go here. Uh, 
back rank checkmate coming on. Bishops down here. Push. Let's push here. It's coming for a pawn. Let's go here. Can't do any more any more because this pawn is blocking there. So he grabs a pawn. It's going to push this up. So we have a next rear through to his rook. So well, can't even move there, can we? Can't even move there. Can move there. But then he just takes the pawn. So we have to think a little bit. Slivering snake is is snaking out of it. We're plus two at the moment. Look at this, he's snaking out of it. Um, so that's my first choice, because obviously then it's not got the two on one there. Mm -hmm. Is this some sacrifice thing? Not really, it's not that good a sacrifice, is it? So I'm going to go here. Need to get this rook back in the game. Because this pawn is just blocking any access here. So I think we need to get some salt now and put it, put it on the snake to make it really shrivel up or something. Or is that for a snail? I'm gonna go here. So he's looking to double up himself, but the knight's protecting that area. We're on dark squares at the minute. It's gonna go backwards and forwards. He's looking to get here to get here. So I think I'm looking to exchange, bring the rook down. Then he brings his rook, we take, his rook takes. I think that's what we're going to have to do. He's getting too sneaky for me. Yeah, let's do that. Trying to cover off the blind spots, what the opponent's attempting to do. I mean, we've got a rook in the center of the board here. It's not really clever, but if he does push, then we take the bishop. I mean, there is potential if he does come here to actually bring the rook back into the game. But I think I just want to chop him up and take him off the board. Because we're plus two. Although I can't really see the advantages at the minute. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. So five pawns. If we can get rid of some of his pieces, then maybe we stand a better chance, you know, towards driving the end game opening. It does capture. Does that give me a weakness? I bet it does somehow, but let's go here anyway. So the knight comes across. Obviously going to be coming down for the night. It's not coming down for the night. It's coming for the pawn though, isn't it? I can't do anything about that. I suppose I can bring the knight back again to where it was, protecting the pawn. Okay, so it's now pinned my rook. My rook has got the protection though, so I don't need to worry about that. And so I can move my knight now. Looking to attack him. And in fact the knight can take if he does take. But he may feel confident if he keeps his bishop on the board. Um, what's he doing? I don't know what... Oh, that's... Oh, bless him. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. He's, he's given up now, and so, yeah, I think he felt um, he must have thought that that his rook was being defended. That's why he did that move. Uh, so his king's going to come here. Might actually get the pawn. Whoa! Wow. Well, okay. Just keep going up now. Must be resigning now. Okay, still going on. What we can do. Uh, 
in, if you didn't know, if he did take this pawn here, this pawn would be able to go up because the king is behind the pawn. Right, it's not stalemate, he's got places to go. Let's checkmate then. Okay, so that was very, it's like a very clean game, that actually. Let's have a look at the gauge bar on there. And do, 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 do. need to go backwards, don't I yet? Let's take the arrows off from here. Let's take a look at what transpired there. So develop the knight as we did, captured, captured. Just want to get to the more in depth. Yeah, so a slivering snake type thing, very sly in the way that they moved their pieces in terms of small developments towards focusing on, you know, little areas, you know, like the pawn here, um, looking to basically try and win the tempo. Um, those smallest of details are key, I think, as you're developing in your game. Initially, as, as beginners, you, you just take pieces off the board just to get used to the pieces and what they can do. And then in the intermediate sort of level, you say to yourself, well, okay, shall I do a bit of calculation um, where I'm putting my piece? Is it safe? Is it giving me a bit of advantage type thing? Maybe just one or two calculations ahead, moves ahead. And then as you're sort of getting more a bit advanced or more experienced and you want to improve a little bit more, um, go to a, like a maximum of four calculation. <clears throat> but then on top of that, you have to look at the potential for the potential value of those moves. So you may do your calculation, then make the move, but then actually look, what is that move actually doing? Is it doing more than what you actually said? you know, in your initial calculation, is it putting a check on the king or is it putting a check on a, a key piece or is it controlling the main a main square as well as supporting other pieces? And so there's a whole range of stuff that goes on with the movement of your piece. So they attacked, so we kept the bishop in the diagonal, brought the bishop down, just seeing if there's major dips in the evaluation side and anything we can learn from here. So. This was the moment where we thought there's an opportunity to really start chopping the snake to pieces a little bit. So we took a little piece of it there, so won the rhythm. So that's plus 6.4 at the minute, but let's see if it maintained that. Um, we realised this port, this knight was under undefended as well. And at this point, we just wanted to get pieces off the board. So we took the knight off. And then again, we're looking to challenge this knight. We wanted to take all the all of the snake's pieces off as best possible. So no tension because this player was very sly in the way that they move. So they brought that rook down to protect. And now we're looking to try and open up the king area and keeping pressure on the bishop, taking the pawn and going for the exchange. Bringing the rook up so it's Gauge bar is in favour of us this time, so we're not doing anything too nasty apart from what happened just there. Let's see. So it's not really a fan of taking the pawn because there's not. I think it's because there's no um, there's no follow on. You know, the, what's the potential for the move? The potential for the move was yes, it's redu reducing down their pieces, but positionally on the board, even in my heart of hearts, I thought. I can't, there's no finish here, there's there's nothing, so I should have really just not done that move and done something else to challenge the situation, I mean, this, in fact, that's, that's what the engine's saying there, knight e4, that's a lot better actually, because I'm actually targeting the rook, our rook is defending this pawn, and the bishop can take, and then at least the rook can take back type thing. So that would have been a lot better now that I'm looking at that situation. So that's the potential value. You can do your calculations, but what is the real value of it? And in this game, it showed the value of that move wasn't that good. It wasn't dangerous, but it dropped a few points. 
And, oh, and this drops something massive. Oh, look at that. So there's me trying to save the pawn. And... Hmm. What's it saying there? Rook takes c3. Rook takes the knight. Hmm. Interesting. So if we took back... What would be it say minus four there? Oh, lose the rook. Wow, interesting. Yeah, so that was a that was a massive no no. I like doing evaluation. I really do search for these types of things because they do help my improve my game. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Pawn push there. So, totally over-egging the calculation whatsoever. We didn't need to do it, really. And the reason for me pushing that pawn was, I said, well, okay, at least I'm going to have this rook supported. So then if I do have to move my knight, then at least I can take it back with the pawn. That was my rationale. But, oh, it's, it, oh wow, nice one. Okay, so moved on. And so they didn't take advantage of that. So then we went for a blocker with the pawn. And it's saying that that isn't a good thing either. Knight d1. Protecting. Ah. Knight d1 protecting. That doesn't feel good to me. Because I'm... Oh, mind you, I suppose, in a way. It comes into the situation of this. So that's fine. All right. Yep. That's a nice one to know as well. So I think throughout the rest of this period here, it's not looking too good for us. But I felt okay. Me as an individual, I felt okay. I was blocking off the attack on the pawn on this side. But it's got to look a little bit deeper sometimes. And we're going for the exchange, and it does not like that exchange. Rook takes e5, so... Oh, and then I lose the knight. <laughs> and then I lose the knight. Oh my gosh. Wow, so the opponent missed quite a few opportunities where they could have just absolutely cleaned us out. Oh, dear me. So we come down and then capture. So that's where the advantage is given. Two key points for our opponent there. And two key points for us to learn not to do next time. Have to be a bit more mindful of our position. And really do genuinely look at the potential. Um, and then once we've realised the potential. Ask the question about the potential. And make sure that it is worthy of a move. Good game. Oh, I'm glad to have got my 19 points back as well. Cheers, Liches. Liches. Luches. <laughs>